Red Bull Bakers, although we're at the end of August, myself and Beth from Entertaining with Beth are making the most of it and we are bringing you a last summer's picnic menu. Beth will be making a fresh tortellini pesto salad with cherry tomatoes and mozzarella. It sounds gorgeous. And to accompany her dish, I am making butterscotch pudding with caramelized bananas to take with you on your picnic. If you haven't done so already, I strongly urge you to go over to Beth's channel and subscribe. She cooks with such ease, creating beautiful homemade dishes, both sweet and savory. And I know you guys are gonna love them as much as I do. Now let's get baking. In heavy bottom saucepan, add in your butter and your sugar and mix it around until the butter dissolves. Once everything is melted, simmer your mix. We're gonna cook it for around two to three minutes. The longer you cook it, the better flavor your butterscotch pudding has. It's gonna change a little bit in color. It's gonna get a little bit richer. Oh, it smells gorgeous. It's almost there. We're gonna add in the liquid soon to stop the cooking. Hold your nerve when you're cooking the butter and the sugar. You want a nice, deep, beautiful caramel to give you a lovely pudding. This is cooked perfectly for me. I can kind of smell it a little bit smoky. So I'm gonna add in my half and half and stop the cooking. So stand back a little bit, go in with your whisk and keep on whisking. This looks perfect. Just whisk it until all the sugar is dissolved. Turn your butterscotch down low and we're ready for the next step. This is how we're going to thicken our butterscotch pudding. Add cornstarch to your eggs and give it a good whisk. Then pour in a cup of the hot butterscotch and continue whisking. This method is called tempering and it's introducing a hot liquid into a cold liquid. What we are trying to do is get it roughly the same temperature as the other liquid. Perfect, nice and smooth, and we're ready to go back into the pot. Pour that mix into your butterscotch. Once your eggs and corn flour go in, stand by and keep on mixing it. It's gonna thicken really fast. You see it starting to thicken? That's all the eggs and the corn flour going to work. Now you just want to thicken it a little bit more. This takes around maybe two to three minutes of cooking. Gorgeous. At this stage, you add in your vanilla extract and your salt. Salt is really important in this pudding. When you take your butterscotch pudding off the stove, you want to pass it through a fine sieve. This is a really important step because it gets out any little lumps of maybe egg or cornstarch that are in there and it yields you a beautiful smooth butterscotch pudding. Make sure you taste your pudding at this point too in case you want to add a little bit more vanilla or a little bit more salt, it's up to you. Mmm, well, yummy. For your puddings, use any kind of sealable jars that you have at home. I like to use odd and different size ones because it makes them kind of quirky. Fill your jars three quarters of the way with the butterscotch pudding. Thick and beautiful that is. Prepare the other jars the same way and save room for your caramelized bananas on top. Once your butterscotch pudding is in whatever container you're using, lay some cling film on the very top of it and seal any air from getting at it. And this will prevent it from forming a skin. We're gonna let our butterscotch pudding cool down and when it goes cold enough, pop it into the fridge and let them set up and they'll thicken quite nicely. While these are going cold, we're gonna get started on our caramelized bananas. To make your caramelized bananas, in a nice heavy bottom saucepan, add in your butter and your brown sugar. A little bit like the butterscotch pudding, we want to create kind of a nice caramel to give our bananas really good flavor and color. Now I like to add a pinch of salt and a tiny pinch of cinnamon to give your bananas some warmth. Before we add in our sliced bananas, we're gonna cook this a little bit more and get a bit of a richer caramel. Now that we have this beautiful rich color in our caramel, we're gonna lay in our sliced bananas. Here's my secret for successful caramelized bananas. Let them all have their own space on the pan. Don't pile them on top of each other. And make sure you don't turn them. Leave them sit in the pan and caramelize and bubble away for two, three minutes and let them get a beautiful golden brown. And then we're gonna flip them over. Okay, now we're gonna try and turn them over. <gasps> Look at that beautiful color. They're gorgeous. Now that is what I'm talking about when I say caramelized. And then you turn them over and you cook them on the other side for another three to four minutes and get them nice and soft. Our caramelized bananas are done. We're gonna take them off the heat, set them aside to cool, and when they go cold enough, we're gonna to top them off on our butterscotch pudding. Once your pudding has set, add a generous spoonful of your caramelized bananas on top. I like to have pudding and bananas in every bite. It's a big and bold dessert ready for a late summer's picnic or any occasion. You guys are gonna love this recipe. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to check out Beth's beautiful summer salad. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you back here again next Thursday for more Bigger Bolder Baking.